Hey guys, today we are going to be talking a little bit more about cryptography. Now, I know that I did already a video on encryption, but over here there are a little bit more concepts and things that you need to remember. So let's jump over here into my screen. I already put over here a few areas that we need to consider and think about it. First of all, cryptography. The main idea behind cryptography is because we want to have confidentiality we want to make sure that we have integrity authenticity and non repudiation so really quick definition on what those things are confidentiality very easy means that only the person who's sending and receiving are the ones who understand those things no one else even though if they are hearing it they don't understand what it is so it's confidential any type of messages so that's why we use symmetric keys for example, to achieve symmetric and asymmetric keys, actually. So let's let's put it both of them over here, actually. Basically, any type of encryption, asymmetric keys, any type of encryption will protect the confidentiality of the message because no one else can read that message. Integrity, that means that the message that was sent is what it was received. Now, let me repeat that again. The message that was sent, that means that if I send a message to John, John is receiving the same message. Well, how does John know that he is receiving the same message, right? So that's why through some cryptography things, like for example, hashing and digital signatures, John is going to be able to know that the message that they are, he's receiving is actually complete and accurate to what I sent, that it didn't got changed in between. So let's make sure we have hashing and digital signatures. What is hashing? Hashing is basically a calculation on the message. Basically, you have the message and then you do a mathematical calculation and you come up with a number. Now, that number will change if the message got to be changed. So when John receives the message, he runs the same calculation on his side on the message and compares it to the hashing that I also sent it to him. Now, if both of those things are the same, that means that the message didn't got changed. Now, over there, we also have a digital signature that protects all of that and helps to do the authentication, meaning that John knows that the message is coming from me and no one else. How digital signature works, not going into much of a detail, but just to give that overview and understanding, a digital signature is basically an encrypted message that contains who am I and who is the person who is sending. All of that message is, let's say, backed up or basically is being uh, transmitted to another organization that is saying, yes, Dan is who is supposed to be. So when John receives a message from me, he knows that I'm the one who's actually sending that message. Now, digital signatures does not contain the same as hashing, does not contain any type of messages. It's just that calculation. So you cannot just send a digital signature or a hashing and expect that someone knows your message. The message will go through either an asymmetric key or a symmetric key type of encryption that guarantees the confidentiality. Finally, non-repudiation. Non-repudiation means that someone cannot say, I didn't do something. So if I send something to John and John tells me I received it, John cannot tell me otherwise because I know that he receives the message. Or the same way, if I send a message to John, I cannot say, hey, I didn't send that message to John. That's non-repudiation. And that's achievable also with a digital signature. Now, of course, this module is not going into deep what's hashing digital signatures and how to do a symmetric or symmetric keys. It's just the high level understanding on those are the type of areas that cryptography is interested on and that's why basically we do a lot of these type of encryptions and so on now outside of cryptography let's go a little bit deeper into what are some of the algorithms used for symmetric keys and asymmetric keys now for symmetric keys the algorithms that are typically used is des 3des aes rc4 rc5 rc6 and there's a few other ones that I listed over there. They're not so common in the world of the CISA. So most likely they're not going to come in the exam. But if you get to see them, you already know. So if something is talking about, hey, RC4 type of encryption, you already know that it's a symmetric type of encryption. 
Difference between symmetric and asymmetric is that both of them are private keys. Now, asymmetric depends on a public and a private key. Now, what are some of the algorithms used on asymmetric? There are only three types of algorithms, RSA, ECC, and Defi-Hellman. Defi-Hellman is usually used more for, for VPN solutions, but I put it out there. Most typically is used RSA and ECC. So if you see over there, you will know that those are asymmetric type of keys. Finally, hashing is also a method of recalculation. It's not an encryption method. It's a method to do that mathematical calculation on a message to know if the message is complete and accurate to make sure that the message didn't got changed. So there are three types of hashings, MD5, SHA1, and SHA3. So whenever you see those ones, don't get confused. It's not that someone is encrypting a message. What they're talking about is a hashing method. If they're talking about hashing, they're talking about integrity because hashing only is related to integrity, the integrity of the message, making sure that the message didn't got changed. Hashing is also part sometimes of the digital signature goes by uh, hand by hand. And part of that is sometimes also called the message digest. So the digital signature comes with a hashing or message digest to not just make sure that, hey, someone is who's supposed to be and is sending me information, but making sure that the information is also complete and accurate. So I hope this information helps you a lot, focusing a little bit more on encryption. I know it's a huge area. A lot of people usually have a lot of uh, trouble getting that information and area. Now let's go over here and let's do one example. One question that I saw it over here that is talking when transmitting a payment instruction, which of the following will help verify that the instruction was not duplicated? So let's think about from that perspective first. Now, independently if it's a payment instruction or anything, we're transmitting some data, right? So we can just go ahead and forget about that first part. What we need to focus on is the second part that says, which of the following will help verify that the instruction was not duplicated? Now, over here, basically the main, the main keyword is duplicated. Now let's go back over here. And remember, cryptography is being used for confidentiality, integrity, authenticity, and non-repudiation. Now, duplication is not part of that. Duplication is not confidentiality because it could be that the same information is duplicated. It's just confidentially duplicated. It doesn't have to do anything with integrity. It could be that those messages are the same, are in, have integrity, but they're duplicated. Authenticity, meaning that it came from the correct person, yes, but it's duplicated, so it doesn't prevent that. Non-repudiation means that the person who's sending cannot say that he didn't send. Well, he just got sent twice for some reason. So actually, even though I look over here and it's talking about duplication, it's talking about cryptographic algorithms, checksums, it's talking about message digest and ciphering, all of these areas are related to encryption, but the interesting part is that none of that is related to duplication. So if you come over here and read this question and then start looking for the answers before even reading the answers, before even like trying to get a conclusion, you will get confused because you say, okay, a cryptographic hashing algorithm, a message digest, a checksum. So if you see three of those answers are, are the first three ones over here, seems that they're appropriate somehow. Like logically, seems like they're appropriate. So you could either choose A, B, or C. Now, it's interesting because usually if you go ahead and jump into the correct answer, let's say, for example, B, you feel, yeah, the message digest may help with duplication. You will stop reading the rest of the answers. Well, the interesting part is that the last answer, it says using a sequence number and time stamp doesn't have anything to do with it doesn't have anything to do with algorithms or encryption or cryptography, right? So you will get confused over here because you read the first three questions and you went ahead and thought about it that the question is related to encryption. The question is related to cryptography. So you said, okay, well, I will stop over here. That's why it's really good to read all the answers and from there, check what makes more sense. Now. 
I read all the answers, but I also analyze the question. And I know the question is not related to encryption or cryptography. So with that, I know that A is not going to be because that's cryptography related. B is cryptography related. C is cryptography related. The only one that is not cryptography related is D. Now, of course, not because of that, I'm just going to select D. I'm going to read and see if it makes sense. Using a sequence number and a timestamp will prevent duplication. Yes, especially if we use a timestamp. Because if a message were to be duplicated, that means the message was sent twice. Well, the first time it was sent on one microsecond, the second time it was sent in a different time. Could be like less than a second, but you know, it's in a different time. So with that, you will know that, hey, this message have the same sequence, na sequence number because it was duplicated, but have a different time stamp. So with that, you will know the message is duplicated. So with that, I think the correct answer is T. If we come over here, yes, the correct answer is T. When transmitting data, a sequence number and or timestamp built into the message to make it unique that can be checked by the recipient to ensure that the message was not intercepted and replayed. This is known as replay protection and could be used to verify that the payment instruction was not duplicated. There you go, that will be the correct answer. So with that, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.